What is up guys? Welcome on back to TK's Garage. And well, today I got something totally different for y'all, man. Might make this a bonus video, might not. But I want to give you guys, and I apologize for the wind in advance, man. It's a little windy out here. But I want to give you guys a little bit of a history lesson on weapons. <music> Now, no, even though I speak Russian, you haven't seen, I, I promise I haven't become an arms dealer. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you guys some of the cool stuff that we have with out here. And this is stuff that the United States military has used over the years um, in different conflicts all around the world in warfare. Now, let me give you, let's just start with some of... The more basic stuff and shout out to my army guys they're gonna know exactly what this is this was a soviet m1939 52k 85 millimeter anti-aircraft gun Woo! heavy air defense gun isn't that crazy and you know what with some probably some modifications and tightening some stuff up and getting it back together you can see like wires and stuff were cut everywhere i bet you this thing could still fire too Let's look at some more crazy stuff. Some more crazy stuff. That's crazy. Look at that. Look at that gun right there, boy. Whoo. Beast. Absolute beast right there. Uh. And then you got this monstrosity. Man, it's cool to see where technology has come. When it comes to weapons, like now, and you know what's funny? People be like, yo, GE makes my, uh, <laughs> yo, GE makes my light bulbs. Well, guess what? General Electric also made weapons, or they still do make weapons for the U.S. military in case you didn't know. In case you didn't know. Now, you know, warfare kind of started from this stuff, which was like, you know, the Howitzers and, you know, you know the general shells so to speak to you know and stuff like this to going into more advanced and computer um warfare now this is an iraqi unit according to this iraqi sz60 so it was probably a soviet one that was repurposed and we probably stole this or you know or i shouldn't say stole we acquired this when we invaded these bums during desert storm i, I need to stop i'm gonna, people are gonna be like oh tk is really coming out now huh yes sir look at this now we're starting to get into some more advanced weapon systems look at that man missiles with wings this was a drone this was the lockheed x7a1 target drone so the air force used this so basically they would fly this well, they'd fire this off in jets or aircraft that we would have for training would chase these down. Now, they still do that now. Um, but last I checked, I think the U.S. Air Force are using Typhoons. I believe that's a French aircraft. And they have a defense contractor that, that flies those. I think they're using Typhoons. Here we go. This one's from 1948. We got an M-51 Sky Sweeper 75 millimeter anti-aircraft gun whoo damn that's all i can that's all i can say about that damn so somebody would sit here in this uncomfortable ass seat and fire that joint man hydraulic control valve you got the stuff right there and there's some of what they would look like rounds that they've welded into it crazy isn't it whoo beast We'll keep it moving, and we're going to get over here towards some other interesting weaponry. The Nike Ajax. The Nike Ajax was the world's first surface-to-air guided missile. Look at that. From 1953. But I guarantee you, if you looked at this, you probably would not think that this was old 
you know, some of my guys, some of my people that I rock with here on the tube that are still active duty army that know that uh, deal with uh, Patriot missile batteries now would probably be like, wow, this is crazy. But this thing had a ceiling of 70,000 feet and a top speed of Mach 2.25. Basically, your ass was not outrunning this shit. All right. The system went operational just after the end of the Korean War. Now think about that. Because most of your Korean War vets are old. They're getting to the point of like, uh, of, uh, you know, World War II vets. There's not very many of them left. All right, so we got this one here. What is this big monstrosity? This is a, a Nike Hercules. So this one had a ceiling of 106,000 feet, basically just a bigger weapon with a mock with a top speed of Mach 3.5. So this was like a big boy rocket right here. Damn, man. That's crazy. Totally different. And can you can you imagine like and here's the thing. These are retired systems. Completely retired systems. You got another one right here same one and it's on the on the launcher isn't that crazy man and could you imagine just just take a guess like imagine how much one of these would cost you know it's probably a lot less back then but in today's money to fire one of these whew, whew, too much the sprint missile this one hit mach 4.31 jesus Enhanced radiation nuclear warhead. So this was a nuclear missile. Okay. That's when you get to the top of the food chain right there. Had a ceiling of 19 miles and a range of 25 miles. Huh. So it could go straight up. And then I guess it went straight up into the atmosphere and then come back down because with a range of only 25 miles, that's not a that's not great. Um, okay, so yeah, when Sprint launched, the silo door was blown off with explosive bolts and a massive gas piston pushed the missile upwards out of the silo. Once clear, the missile's rocket motor kicked in. Sprint's most remarkable feature was its speed accelerating to Mach 10, Jesus, or 7,600 miles per hour in four seconds. The missile's first stage burned for 1.2 seconds and the second for slightly longer intercepting the incoming warhead within 10 to 15 seconds from launch Whoo! so this was a system that would be used to to uh blow up incoming nuclear weapons so not used as a weapon it was used to hit incoming nuclear weapons now that's crazy wow huh Big old radar dish. Radar antenna, the Hercules. HPAR, target acquisition, huh? All right. And then we start getting into more compact weapon systems, like this. 23 Hawk, medium range surface to air missile that entered in 1960. The homing all-the-way killer involved into a theater ballistic missile interceptor. 35 years service life. Wow. That's a long time in the military. The system is still in use with many militaries around the world, but was superseded by the Patriot Missile System in 1994. So some countries probably still use it. Huh. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. All right. Looks like we got what? Armored personnel carrier over here. All right, let's see here. Clean. I always wanted to go to a, I, I need, I wanna, maybe I need to do that. Maybe we need to go hit the surplus auction, the military surplus auction. 
not even to just go pick up some stuff, but just to go see what some of this stuff would sell for. Because, you know, why I know you have to have a license and all that to run tanks, but oh, this is a howitzer. What? Hold on. 105 millimeter self propelled howitzer was the first U.S. self propelled artillery piece to have a fully enclosed turret. Hmm. Wow. Maximum speed 40 miles per hour, cruising range 100 miles. So full tank of gas, you can go 40 miles an hour for 100 miles and then you were screwed. Not bad, man. That's crazy though. I didn't know that was a friggin' howitzer. I thought it was just like an armored personnel carrier with a, with a weapon on the front, but damn. Now guys, you know, normally, um, I think what, I would, what I'm going to do with this is make this a bonus video for some of you guys. Because some of you guys are probably going to be like, what in the hell? <laughs> what in the hell is this, TK? And I'm going to be like, oh, you know, I wanted to show you guys something different. Sometimes, you know, you got you to gotta just show people different stuff. Look, they got the old, old guns. Back from like the Civil War days and stuff out here too. The old um, rolling cannons and stuff. I think they still use some of those up until what world war one some of those old i don't want to call them shot put cannons but they had the little cannonballs and stuff in them world war one was a weird war it was old technology planes were just coming into the ability for people to you know for countries and stuff to use in war it was it was definitely different Definitely different to say the least. All right. Stay off the equipment. Yes, please. All right. Look at this one. That's ridiculous. You know what? I think that might be my thumbnail right there. Um, the US MGM 31A Perishing or Pershing. Long was the first of a family of powerful long-range nuclear missiles put this in here so you guys can read this if you want in service during the cold war so this is probably like a small missile system that they would put um in different areas in europe the warhead was nuclear with a circular probability of error of 1200 feet that's not bad Served until it was replaced by the perishing 1A missile system in 69 and 70. Had a 100 to 400 mile range. Damn. Well. Crazy. Definitely crazy. And imagine this. Could you, I could, I, you ain't going, I'm not fitting in this box. Hell no. Nah. Even if I was sitting in that, you think I could fit in that box? No. They had to get little jits to fit in these boxes. No way, man. Whew. Damn. <clears throat> now we got some of the old cannons and stuff over here. Now what's crazy about this is, um, you know, like if you go to some places like St. Augustine, they still have the old military shows and they actually still fire some of these old cannons. You know, they'll roll them out. That's a little bit more advanced, but they'll actually roll them things out and fire them. And some of this stuff is like World War I, um maybe a little bit before world war one but let's go look at some of the date on some of this stuff i know you guys probably don't care about none of that and you guys want me to get to that stuff over there which i will in just a minute but let's see u.s three inch field gun field gun yeah see 1902 introduced in 1902 this gun replaced the 3.2 inch field gun model of 1897 so this was just an artillery weapon. 1902, you can see the stamp on it. Three inch gun carriage, Bethlehem Steel Company. That one was manufactured in 1917. Wow, so it was around for a little bit. But it just goes to show you how advanced our weapons systems have become as a military and a very short 
period of time. <clears throat> now I know some of you guys are going to say, what do you mean by short? Well, I mean short in terms of relative time. You know, we're looking at, what, 120 years? And, you know, in that time period, we now can fly, go to space. Think about this. In all of our recorded history, and it probably goes back a few thousand years, right? But nothing crazy, right? You'd think that we've been the same intelligent people for a long time, but how come we don't have any records of that crap? Think about it. I mean, going back to, and going way, way back to like the Egyptians and whatnot, and then all of a sudden, 120 years ago, we start getting massive advancements in technology, weapons, medicine, um, just, think, just just literally, just in the last 120 years. So if we jump this much in the last 120 years, just imagine what your grandkids are going to be doing. All right. We're going to get over here to some more deer. I don't know what the hell that is. I ain't never seen that. Oh, that's because it's an Italian gun. Italian Semovente. 21 mile an hour speed. Okay. Oh, it was captured in 1945 by the U.S. Army. Okay. So it's a World War II weapon. And we got this one here. It's cool to see we got some enemy weapons that were captured that they put on display. Um, with the great success of the M12 155 millimeter gun in Western Europe by 1944, the Army was convinced that a new self-propelled gun was needed. Yep. 24 mile an hour. 100 mile cruising range cool nine cylinder radial gasoline 960 horsepower think about that for a minute this tank has about as much horsepower as a modded hellcat or demon ain't that some shit <laughs> this has as much horsepower as a modded hellcat or demon just let that sink in and now we drive that. We, we, we drive 1,000 horsepower stuff every day. Oh, this has got to be French. This is some weirdo shit right here. <laughs> I'm wrong. All right, let me see. The heavy how? Oh, it's from the Germans. All right. So this was a German weapon. Yeah. Well, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that give two shits about the Nazis weapons they got punished and what's funny is people will say that you know your weapons are everything right nah heart has more to do with has more to do with it than weapons the m1 8 inch gun 1943 so another World War II weapon right there see it has more to do with the heart of the fight than the weapons that are used you know what i'm saying um be, reason being if you do your history the germans had far superior tanks to our tanks right you know the the tanks that we use oh look at the cool little watch this squirrel become over here and like bust my balls or something they're bright red out here different maybe that's a chipmunk what is this another drone looks that way interesting but anyways like we had we had way less superior weapons in terms of artillery tanks okay this is a guided missile the jb2 was the first american guided missile an american copy of the german v1 flying bomb okay solid rocket sled which quickly boosted its speed to 250 miles an hour 150 miles 200 pounds of high explosive it reached 440 uh -huh. miles and 440 miles an hour that's not ridiculously fast but that's cool to see like what your first guided missiles look like and then we got a lot of the old school armor personnel carriers you got a deuce and a half with a some kind of rocket on it Soviet 102, 122 millimeter field gun. 
a lot like the German shit, man. See, what's funny is like it's kind of like one design and you can do a couple different things to kind of change it up. But there's not much you can do to uh, completely alter, you know, completely change up a design when it comes to something like that. And I'd love to get my hands on one of these. Just to have it. Like, it, it would be a daily driver. Like, no bullshit. That's the smallest freaking tank I think I've ever seen. Alright, let's see here. The La M4 Lacrosse missile. 20 mile range. Warhead was a conventional 245 pound high explosives, shape charge, and 10 kiloton nuclear. This was a nuclear weapon, huh? Wow. Alright. Ah, it had lots of problems, so they canceled it. That doesn't surprise me. Armstrong Heatmaster. Like, that's crazy, these tires, right? Oh, they're flat. <laughs> but, man, I would love to get my hands on one of these. Not the weapon system, but the um, just the truck. I think they're super friggin' cool. Maybe, maybe one that size. The Jumpin' Jack flash what now tell me that's not cool that's ridiculous huh all right let's keep walking through i just want to see that last little itty bitty tank over there i've seen all like all the other stuff we start getting into like french stuff and we all know that they just lay down so their weapons are kind of irrelevant. Um, US M108-105 self-propelled howitzer. This is the same thing we saw out front. All right, cool. One of the first ones we saw, but they have another one out here. That's cool. All right. Da, 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 da. So this was a... Uh, quick moment of silence so this weapon was actually recovered and the soldiers that were inside actually died soldiers from C battery were killed in the action assigned to this gun SB force Lester C Williams staff sergeant James R Norris and sergeant Wendell C McBurrows mm. let me put all this right here damn That kind of puts a damper on stuff, right? When you know the people that were in this uh, system died, and you probably can see why. You can see some of the damage right here. And it's different when you can touch it, see it, smell it. I guess that's my biggest issue with my friends that are what I like to call super liberals because, you know, they think shit is sweet, and it's not. Look at this hole in here, all right? And it just melted that steel all the way through. And I'm willing to bet if I go to the other side, I'm probably going to see another hole. And uh, more than likely, they had a... Uh, nope. So it literally just went in there. So they it went in from that side and then probably exploded, right? Jesus. That's probably an anti-tank weapon, but you can see the damage right here. Just look at that, man. And it's important. It's important to understand for y'all that be thinking like shit is sweet. You know, the, the, the ability for you to say ignorant shit online, for you to troll, for you to talk bad about people, for you to just make up crap and just say whatever you feel like saying. This, this right here, that hole, them soldiers that lost their lives in that equipment and you can see it went right that round went right in there and probably killed everybody in that unit right there it's important to come touch it feel it see it and learn from it and understand that your freedom the freedom that you take advantage of every single day was earned by shit like this the fact that you speak english and not german is because of shit like this let me get off my soapbox now. 
All right, let's try to get back to a more happier thing. So this is an exposed unit. So you weren't even, you were outside just chilling on that metal seat. You were just out there butt naked. You got a big old gun, but you was out there butt naked. US M56 90 millimeter self-propelled gun, AKA the Scorpion. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. A total of 325 Scorpions were manufactured from 1953 to 1959 by the Cadillac Motor Car Division of General Motors of Cleveland. This is a Cadillac. Wait a minute. <laughs> this, this, this is a Cadillac. Oh my God, I'm blown away. Wow. Back to some more scary shit. <laughs> this weapon is just chilling up here. MGM 29 Sergeant missile. Solid propellant missile was designed to succeed the Corporal missile. It flew in 1956 and was fielded in 1962. Seven U.S. Army battalions and three West German battalions were equipped with this system. Huh. One to South Korea and one to, at Fort Sill. Which is where we're at. I don't think anybody would be stupid enough to come into uh, Oklahoma. <laughs> you know, they got the stripes right there. Damn. All right. Well, damn. <laughs> well, damn it, man. Uh which I want to bet YouTube demonetizes me for showing weapons of war. This video, anyway. This is a self-propelled 152 millimeter gun or howitzer from the Soviets. Entered service in the early 70s. M 1973 was the NATO designation. The M 1978 could also operate in a nuclear, biological, and chemical environment and carried infrared night vision equipment. Damn! But yeah, you can see it though if you look up top. So this was probably a sealed, a completely sealed unit. So look up here at the top. So if you look up here at the top, you can see that's probably their scope where they could look out it in the evening. You have your regular side mounted and then that up top I'm just saying with the tent where it's polarized like that it's probably where they were getting their infrared night vision out of it but that's crazy that that uh so this could operate in a nuclear environment wow well I guess until you ran out of fuel right because somebody would have to be outside to fuel the damn fuel the damn tank right Whew. Alrighty then. Damn. I was going to say, I'm surprised. This is a Marine Corps unit. 8 inch self propelled Howitzer from the United States Marine Corps. Yes, sir. And we're going to come over here. First Cavalry. We got a First Cavalry unit over here. Uh 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 crazy this was the self-propelled howitzer that was used in desert storm the m109 a2 huh but i think the one that you guys probably recognize and know the most is going to be this bad boy right here this one is in pretty much every bad boy movie right um from the soviet you know like think about later rambo movies or steven seagal joints this one right here this is a soviet 122 millimeter self-propelled howitzer right um i think they even call it you know what i think they even have one of these in the iron man movie uh behind him about to fire on him when he ducks it shoots he ducks he turns around and he, he obliterates it but you can see the bulletproof glass up top that's already been hit and you can see the look 
you see that glass actually broke oof now I'm wondering if this was how this was seized um, they seen service in 26 nations this M1974 a war trophy of the 117th field artillery red was captured in Iraq okay so this was um, a Russian unit that was captured in Iraq um, that was probably sold to the uh, sold to the Iraqi government at the time interesting got some more cannons guns that truck over there looks kind of cool old school boom but I think that's about does it. I think this is a long ass bonus video for y'all today. Oh, look at this, look at Thor. <laughs> I guess that's a hammer, huh? Alrighty then. I see you, Thor. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. I'm gonna walk back. I got my walking in today, I can tell you that. I got my exercise in today. Huh. Whew. I sure did get that. And maybe y'all little youngsters and stuff and people that might watch these videos might learn a little bit about some of this equipment and where it came from. Self-propelled howitzer. Started in the 80s. Maximum speed of 42 miles an hour. And I'll tell you right there, that thing looks nasty. Huh. Yeah, unfortunately, for you jits, for you youngsters, you'll never see equipment like this on the battlefield, I don't think. Outside of there being like a electromagnetic attack where we all have to fall back to older weapon systems like mortars and shit. You know, our weapon systems now are pretty much mostly aerial and outside of the Navy. You know, on ships and mostly aerial, and, and even the even the ships aren't. You're not going to have ships trading fire anymore, like you did even 50, 60 years ago. Everything is guided, electronic, GPS guided missile systems now. You know, the army is the same way with their Patriot bis missile batteries and other missile batteries. It's really not not to say that they don't still have tanks. They do, but you know the next conflict the next war we'll have armored personnel carriers you know the 82nd aka all the way will be jumping out aircraft parachuting down you know the marines will still have their armored personnel carriers you might have a couple of these howitzers you know rolling in but the majority of stuff you're gonna see is all that right there little tiny batteries of missiles getting drug around in position to f-35s shooting and destroying stuff from several hundred miles away don't even see the target when they hit it that's the future of warfare this these are relics of warfare past and it's crazy anyways guys just a little something different for y'all today for a bonus video wanted to show you guys kind of the history of some weapons it's not something i get to do every day so being out here and seeing all this gear plotted out in this park i thought it would be cool to show some of it to you guys so with that said let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and i know some of y'all are going to say well the next wars tk they're all going to be cyber they're all going to be you know from far away you're probably right you're probably right Look at our oil pipelines getting hit, meat factories getting hit. Probably right. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about all the equipment we got to show today in the comment section down below. And if you like this little turn, this little bit of a different look at different things, also let me know in the comments because I definitely could take you to a, a naval base and show you a lot of stuff that I know a lot better than in this old ground gear you know show you some of the old some of the old ships maybe work on a video that might take me a little bit run down and see the USS Alabama um, maybe hit Mayport and see some stuff out there 
But if that's something that you guys would be interested in, let me know in the comment section down below. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Oh yeah, and last but certainly not, not least, major shout out to the U.S. Army Field Artillery, U.S. Army Field Artillery Museum for allowing me to come out here and fil film today. In case you guys didn't know, the military is not very friendly of people that are filming stuff on post. And major shout out to Force Protection as well for being understanding and uh, letting me do my thing. All right, guys, and we are heading off post. Major shout out to Fort Sill, man. I appreciate the hospitality. Major shout out to the museum and major shout out to Force Protection for allowing me to uh, come out here and do what I did today, man. I really appreciate y'all. Uh, y'all be safe and all that good stuff. Shout out to all my army people. Be safe and I will catch y'all on the next one.